Hi there, Mr. Sutton bringing you the AB Calculus 3.7 lesson on the chain rule. In this one, we will be taking derivatives of compositions of functions. To start off this lesson, how do you think we could find the derivative of y equals cosine of tan of x? Pause the video, give it some thought. All right, now the first thing to realize is that we're not actually multiplying cosine and tan of x together. This is a composition. We're plugging tan into cosine. This is not a product rule. So how do we deal with the composition of functions? To take the derivative of one of these, we need something called the chain rule. So for derivatives of compositions, if, for example, you're taking the derivative of f of g of x, we do the following. So we're going to have f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So just to write out in English what this means, we're basically taking the derivative of the outer function and you have the inside function still in there uh, without being changed. So derivative of the outer function, no change on the inside. But then we're multiplying that by the derivative of the inner function, which I call the tail. So applying that to this problem now, doing step one here, derivative of the outer function, we're basically taking the derivative of cosine of, well, something. I'll call it cosine of u, but what is the derivative of cosine of something going to be? Well, that's just going to be negative sine of something. So when we actually write this out, we're going to have negative sine of something inside here. Now, what's the something? It's just the uh, inner function unchanged. So this is just going to be this original tan of x function inside here. So that was step one. Step two, again, we have to multiply by the tail, the derivative of the inner function. So we're now taking the derivative of the inner, inner function of tangent. And we know that that's really secant squared of x. So we're just going to multiply by that. And this is our derivative. Now, you've actually been using the chain rule all along without knowing it. Whenever you take the derivative of something with x, you're multiplying by the derivative of x. But that's just one, so we don't really notice it. Here's another example for you to try out. Give this one a shot. So we are going to need the chain rule on this. We've got another composition of functions. Our general setup is we're taking the derivative of secant of some inner function, secant of something. So that's going to be secant u tan of u, that's just the regular secant derivative, times the derivative of something, times u prime. So in this case, we're going to have secant of 5x cubed plus 1 and tan 5x cubed plus 1. That's all one big derivative of the outer function right there, times the derivative now of 5x cubed plus 1, which is going to be 15x squared. On this next example, we're throwing a few new things at you. For one thing, we want the derivative of a function at a specific x value, pi over 6. And for another, we have now a actual product here, 7x times sine of 2x. So for that, we are going to, you guessed it, need the product rule. That was, again, u prime v plus uv prime. Now, just as a little hint before you go off and try this one, you can use the chain rule inside of a product or quotient rule. That's completely allowed. So pause the video and let's see where you go with this one. All right, so I'll set up my box and ribbon to help me with this. I've still got my two factors, 7x, and I also have sine of 2x now. The derivatives of those, we've just got 7. And for sine of 2x, well, this is going to require a chain rule. So we're going to have the derivative of the outer function of sine. So derivative of sine of something is cosine of something, cosine of 2x in this case. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of that inner function of 2x, which is just 2. And I'll just put that out in front here. So I'm going to plug pi over 6 now directly into these things inside the box. So if x is pi over 6, then we have the following four pieces. 7x is just going to be 7 pi over 6. Sine of 2x, well, that's going to be sine of pi over 3, uh, which is going to be radical 3 over 2, if you remember your unit circle stuff. 7 is still 7. And now we have 2 times cosine of 2x. So that's, let's see, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. 2 times that is just going to be 1. Using my ribbon now to put it all together, I've got 7 radical 3 over 2 plus, well, this is just 7 pi over 6 times 1, so just uh, 7 pi over 6. So you might have noticed that we start adding more and more with these examples as we go. Uh, here's another one with a little bit more to it. This one has more than one inner function. Pause the video and see how far you get on this. So the secret when you have more than one inner function is just to keep adding a link, a multiplication link, 
for every inner function. So the chain just keeps growing. But we have to start on the outside and work our way in. Our outermost function is the square root of something. So I'll call this square root of a that we're trying to take the derivative of. So what's the derivative of the square root function? Well, this is really a to the 1 half. Um, so this would just be 1 half times something to the negative 1 half. So in this case, 1 half times sine of 3 minus x to the 8th to the negative 1 half. Um, so that whole sine bit of garbage is going inside there. All right, so now we move on to the next function in. What's the next function? Well, we have two good candidates here. We either have a sine function or an eighth power. Um, so the eighth power is actually happening to this 3 minus x stuff inside the sine function. That's what this notation really means. So our next function is going to be sine of something. I'll call it sine of b. So what's the derivative of sine of something? Well, that's just going to be cosine of something. So I'm going to have cosine of an inner function here. The inner function is going to be this 3 minus x to the 8th stuff. All right, next function in is going to be the 8th power. So we're taking the derivative of something to the 8th power. What's that going to be? Well, that's just going to be 8 times something to the 7th power. The something now is going to be this 3 minus x. And now we have to take the derivative of the innermost function, 3 minus x. So that's just going to be negative 1, and we'll multiply that on the end there. And our chain is complete. For our final boss battle, get a load of this. Uh, pause the video and see if you can get started on this one. All right, so this one we have more than a single inner function again. Our outermost function this time is going to be what? Is it cotan? Is it the sixth power? So this notation here really means cotan of all this stuff, all of it raised to the sixth. With this notation, the exponent is the outermost function. So we're really starting by taking the derivative of something to the sixth power, which is, as we know, is going to be six times the something to the fifth power. Uh, in this case, that's going to be six times cotan to the fifth of all of this stuff. All right, so moving on to the next function in. Now, this is where you've got to be careful. You haven't actually taken the derivative of cotan yet. You just did the sixth power. So now the next function in is going to be the actual cotan function. So derivative of cotan of something. And we know that that's going to be negative cosecant squared of the something. So in this case, ne negative cosecant squared of this big parentheses fraction business going on here. And now we come to the, the last piece of craziness here. Uh, the innermost function, it turns out, is a quotient. So that means we're doing the derivative of something over something which means we need our quotient rule. So for this, I'm going to set up my box and ribbon. And I've got my numerator now. That's going to be x cubed plus 2. Denominator, 4x minus 5. And this is where it's really nice to have this box and ribbon just to keep everything organized. Um, so now my derivatives, I've got 3x squared and 4. Using the ribbon to put things together. And now I've got a big parentheses about to happen here. I've got 3x squared times parentheses 4x minus 5 minus parentheses x cubed plus 2 times 4. All of that over, this is my v squared here, my 4x minus 5 quantity squared. And that's it. Good thing we don't have to simplify. So that's it for chain rule. Just uh, start on the outside and work your way in, multiplying as you go, and you'll be fine. Till next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.